Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through an overview of the anatomy of the skeleton. You can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash skeleton. And you can also find flashcards to test your knowledge on the anatomy of the skeleton at ZeroToFinals.com slash digital flashcards. So let's jump straight in. We're going to go from top to bottom, taking an overview and learning the basic bones of the skeleton, which will help create a solid foundation before we look at each bone and joint in more detail in later videos. Let's start by looking at the skull. The skull consists of the bones of the head. The cranial bones surround the brain. At the front is the frontal bone, at the top is the parietal bone, and at the back is the occipital bone. Beside the ear is the temporal bone. Anterior to the temporal bone is the sphenoid bone. The final cranial bone, which is a bit more difficult to visualise, is the ethmoid bone which is closer to the midline, posterior to the nose, and inferior to the frontal bone. The facial bones form the structure of the face. The bone that forms the bridge of the nose is the nasal bone. The bone that connects the nose, cheekbones, and the upper teeth is the maxilla. Either side forming the cheekbones are the zygomatic bones. Finally, the jawbone is called the mandible. The mandible connects to the temporal bone at the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ. Next, let's look at the spine. The spine is made up of seven cervical vertebrae in the neck. 12 thoracic vertebrae in the thorax, 5 lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum, and the coccyx. Vertebrae are numbered from the top down, so C1 connects to the base of the skull, and this is followed by C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and then C7 which connects to the first thoracic vertebra, called T1. You then get T1 to T12, then L1 to L5, and then the sacrum. C1 and C2 have special names. C1 is called the atlas, and C2 is called the axis. Next, let's talk about the upper limb. The clavicle lies horizontally between the sternum and the shoulder at the front and upper portion of the chest. The clavicle is commonly called the collarbone. The scapula is the flat, triangular-shaped bone at the back, commonly called the shoulder blade. The humerus is the name for the bone of the upper arm. On the scapula, there's a concave area called the glenoid fossa and the head of the humerus meets the glenoid fossa to form the glenohumeral joint of the shoulder. If we move further down, the humerus meets the radius and the ulnar bones at the elbow joint. Looking a bit closer at the wrist, the radius and the ulna connect to the carpal bones, and there are eight of these carpal bones. The carpal bones connect to the metacarpal bones. The metacarpals are numbered 1 to 5, from the thumb to the little finger, meaning that the first metacarpal is at the base of the thumb, and the fifth metacarpal is at the base of the little finger. The fingers and thumb contain the phalanges. Each finger has a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx. The thumb only has a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx. 
If we move from the base to the tip of each finger, there is the metacarpophalangeal joint or MCP joint, proximal interphalangeal joint or PIP joint, and the distal interphalangeal joint or DIP joint. At the base of the thumb is the carpometacarpal joint or CMC joint. Next let's move on to the thorax. At the top of the thorax is the clavicle, which attaches to the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint. The top part of the sternum is called the manubrium. This attaches to the body of the sternum at the sternal angle. At the very end of the sternum, there is a small bone called the xiphoid process. There are 12 ribs, one for each thoracic vertebrae. The ribs are labelled 1 to 12, corresponding to the vertebra they attach to. The costal cartilages are what connect the ribs to the sternum. The 11th and the 12th ribs do not connect to costal cartilage or to the sternum, and they're called floating ribs. Next, let's move on to the pelvis. The pelvis is made of three main bones, the ileum, the ischium, and the pubis bones. At the base of the spine is the sacrum, and this attaches to the ileum of the pelvis at the sacroiliac joint. On either side at the front of the pelvis is the pubis bones. The pubis bones join in the centre at the pubic symphysis. Inferiorly, there is the ischium. The socket of the hip joint is called the acetabulum, and this is located at the point where all three bones of the pelvis meet together. Next, let's move on to the lower limb. The longest bone in the body is the femur, or the thigh bone. The head of the femur connects with the acetabulum of the pelvis in order to form the hip joint. The femur joins with the tibia and the fibula at the lower leg to form the knee joint. The tibia is medial, closer to the midline, and the fibula is lateral on the outer aspect of the leg. At the front of the knee is the patella bone, which is commonly called the kneecap. Finally, let's move on to the ankle and the foot. At the ankle joint, the tibia and the fibula meet with the tarsal bones of the foot. There are seven tarsal bones. The talus, which is the bone that joins directly with the tibia and the fibula at the ankle joint. The calcaneus the cuboid, the navicular, and then three cuneiform bones. Distal to the tarsal bones are the metatarsals, and these are numbered one to five, with the first metatarsal joining the big toe and the fifth metatarsal joining the little toe. Distal to the metatarsals are the phalanges. There are proximal, middle, and distal phalanges except for the big toe, which only has a proximal phalanx and distal phalanx. A final Tom tip for you. The best way that I've found to learn anatomy is by using flashcards. You can find flashcards to test yourself on the information we've just been through at zerotofinals.com slash digital flashcards. You can keep running through the flashcards and testing yourself until you can easily recall each answer. And then when you can recall all the basic bones of the skeleton, you know you're ready to move on to learning each bone and joint in more detail. Testing yourself shortly after learning something is an extremely powerful way to consolidate that information in your memory and to retain it longer. Let me know in the comments if you found this anatomy video helpful and depending on the response, I'll prioritise making more videos similar to this one. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube.
You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts, which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.